Hi everyone and welcome to this little mini-series on how to make your research reproducible. For this introduction video I'm just going to briefly outline what reproducible research is, tell you a bit about this lecture series and why you should care about making your work reproducible and how it applies specifically to you. So the primary aim of this lecture series is to teach you and educate you on the steps we need to take to make our work reproducible. And the added benefit of this is it will aid you with aspects of your dissertation that you might find quite challenging. For example, your progress report, where you have to think about things in advance and plan things in advance, which is a key step for reproducible research. This lecture series is a collaboration between um, psychology and uh, Edinburgh, the Edinburgh branch of reproducibility. So reproducibility is a grassroots movement to promote reproducible research and practice in science and has been set up an, a num at a number of different institutions around the world. So Laura Klinkhammer and Neve McSweeney are the founders and organisers of the Edinburgh branch of reproducibility. And without these guys, these videos wouldn't exist and they are also involved in creating the content in the next few videos. If you're interested in Edinburgh reproducibility in general, then feel free to check out their Twitter page, their Open Science Framework page, and they also have a YouTube channel where some of the old content, lectures and journal clubs, has been recorded and uploaded. If you would like to join and sign up for Edinburgh, Re Edinburgh reproducibility, you can find a link on their Twitter profile and they generally meet um, on the last Friday of every month to discuss all things um, reproducible in research. So what does the term reproducible actually mean? So reproducible is not the same as replicable. So replicable research means that you're able to repeat a scientific experiment and obtain a similar result with a different data set. So this specifically refers to the clarity of the methods and the fact that you can gain the same result in a different data set. So that's specifically methodology based. Reproducibility is actually more refers to the entire research process. So it involves research that is presented in such a way that others may verify the findings, replicate the results and reproduce or extend upon the methods with relative ease. So it's this term that we are going to be talking to you about today. And that's what we mean when we mean reproducible research is the entire scientific process from the hypothesis generation to the interpretation of the results is clear, open and reproducible. This graphic actually depicts it very well. So if you look in the top two panels, you can see that reproducible research basically just means that someone takes your data, is able to run the same analysis that you did to produce exactly the same result. Whereas replicable research means that they can do that with a different data set. So same analysis, similar result, different data. And that's the fundamental clear difference between the two. One, reproducibility takes effort across the entire research process and that should in turn make your work more replicable. There are a lot of different ways that you can make your work reproducible. It's not an all or nothing process. So any element of reproducibility in your work is seen as a good thing and you are, and researchers pioneering for this strongly encourage that you just do your best and make your work as reproducible as you can at the time. To have reproducible work, ideally you want your work to be accessible, so easily interpreted, replicable, as we've already discussed, transparent, so your methods and what you did is very clearly done, traceable, so the logic and the red thread through your research is very clear, and also open, so things like your data analysis and your data itself open and available for people to look at. And the key element behind all of these things is honesty. And if we are honest with what we do and we are clear about what we do, then our work is far more likely to be reproducible than if we paint a slightly muddy or distorted picture. 
And this is what we strive for in science, is the fact that what we have found is an honest truth, a fundamental truth about the world or humans. So to be able to conduct reproducible research, we're going to give you the three T's or the three pillars of re reproducibility to live by. So the first is think before you do. And this seems like it should be fairly obvious, but when it comes to data, what we usually do is get all of our data and then once we have it, decide how best to analyze it. When the appropriate best practice is to actually decide on your analysis methods before you've collected your data, which is not a normal thing to do and it's quite challenging. And this is just one example of how you can be trained to think before you do. And the second one is to trace your steps. So the reasoning behind any of the decisions that you made need to be clear and obvious so other people are able to follow that logic of reasoning and replicate and reproduce your results. And the third is to be transparent. That is by far the most important. You need to be clear about what you did, how you did it and the results that you obtained. Because if you distort this or manipulate it any way, then your results can no longer, no longer be reliable or valid. So this lecture series is going to focus on those three T's of reproducibility. So aside from this introduction video, you're going to get four other videos that go through those three steps, thinking before you do, tracing your steps and be transparent and how you can apply that to your research and specifically your dissertation. These videos are going to be supported by two live sessions. So the first live session will occur shortly after your poster session, so maybe mid-November. And the second one will occur in semester two, um, and that's yet to be decided. So finally, why should you care about making your work reproducible? I imagine some of you are not going to want to do research when you graduate. Um, so why is this a relevant lecture series to you? Well, the most important short-term reason is you will be doing a scientific research project. Whether or not you want to go into research, that is part of your degree. So you're going to have to plan a research project, design an experiment, plan and run the analysis, and write a progress report. And these lecture series will help you with all of these steps, they'll help you think about how to effectively, effectively design a study, think about how to plan your analysis, and importantly, write a progress report. And the progress report requires you to plan ahead with your analyses and plan ahead with aspects of your data collection. And getting into the mindset and training yourself how to think that way is, is an important element of reproducible research. So this lecture series will really help you with these aspects of your dissertation. In the long term, it will benefit you as an individual and your critical thinking. So to emphasize this, I need to go back to 2015 and this study that was published in Science, which was actually fairly devastating for the whole of the psychological science community. So if you haven't heard of it, a large group of scientists decided to replicate, which means try and reproduce the results using different data of a hundred studies, right? So they got the methods mostly from the journal articles, sometimes by asking the authors and then tried to re like replicate the results of that specific study in different data and also different labs. And 97% of the studies that they used and tried to replicate originally had significant results. So they originally had a p-value low than, lower than 0 0.05. But when they replicated it, only 36% of those studies produced significant results. So they only successfully replicated a significant finding in 36% of studies. Which means that there was over 60% of studies that had a significant result originally and didn't replicate. And this is hugely important because if we as scientists are trying to understand fundamental truths about the world and our methods don't replicate and reproduce, can they can be considered a, a fundamental truth? And the reason this really inspired the reproducible research and open science movement in psychology is because we didn't know where or why these studies didn't replicate. 
We didn't know if it was based on lack of clarity in reporting methods. We didn't know if they did something to the results to slightly alter their effect. We didn't know if they did a different analysis step because their work was not really transparent. They didn't trace their steps. They didn't report what they were going to do before they did it. And these are all critical and important elements of reproducible research. So the real reason why this lecture series is important to you is because research is changing and psychology is helping to lead the way in that. So learning about how to make your work reproducible and more open is going to make you a better scientist. It's going to make you a better critical thinker and it's going to prepare you better for certain aspects of the future. It's also important to understand the possible challenges and pitfalls of making science reproducible that we have to try and address and overcome. Also, you're already implementing some of these reproducible practices because, um, specifically with statistics, you learn R and you learn to code. And coding and having an analysis pipeline that you can clearly follow through code is a key element of making the work you do and we do more reproducible. So you're already one small step of the way to making reproducible research. And it's just continuing to make those tiny steps in research that really helps to make work more open and reproducible and make us understand whether or not the findings that we achieve are actually might be fundamentally true. So look through these videos at your leisure and take from this what you can. They're here for you, they're here to benefit you. At the bare minimum, they'll help you for, um, with certain aspects of your dissertation and particularly your progress report. And hopefully they'll give you a good insight into the open science and reproducible movement and why it exists and how you can implement it in your own research. And maybe it might change your perspective on scientific research as a whole. Thanks very much for watching this video. Um, if you have any further questions about any of the following videos or this little introduction that I've made, please feel free to contact either myself, Laura or Neve. We'll be very happy to answer your questions and I hope to see you in the live session.